This is your Barbados Today Evening News of Thursday, September 13. In just 24 hours, the death toll from COVID-19 has moved to 76. Two deaths were recorded this morning, a fully vaccinated 67-year-old woman who had comorbidities and a 47-year-old man who also had underlying conditions, but he was unvaccinated. The deaths followed the passage of three people on Wednesday, two males, a 58-year-old and a 55-year-old, and a 65-year-old woman. They were all unvaccinated and had comorbidities. Meanwhile, 94 males and 107 females tested positive for the viral illness on Wednesday from the 2,427 tests conducted by the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of these 201 new cases, 39 individuals are under the age of 18 and the remaining 162 are 18 years and older. There are 995 persons in isolation. In other news this Thursday, telecommunications giant Flow has completed its multi-million dollar fiber to the home network rollout in Barbados, making the island the first in the region to have 100% full fiber connectivity. Making the announcement today during an online media briefing, country manager Desron Baino said while the move was not going to result in reduced costs for services to its customers, it will improve the island's overall network capacity. Indeed, today is an historic moment for Flow and Barbados as it relates to the telecommunications sector. It gives me great pleasure to announce that effective September 1st, 2021, Flow is now delivering services to all Barbadian customers exclusively via its state-of-the-art fiber network. We recently decommissioned the final components of our centuries-old copper-based network, and this officially marks the end of a 15-year project to deliver island-wide fiber-to-the-home connections for our broadband, landline, and television services, affectionately known as FTTH. The initial rollout of fiber in Barbados began in 2007, and today we are proud to have a network with the capacity bandwidth and potential to connect all Barbadians. We are now in the process of recovering our copper-based infrastructure that includes exchanges and roadside cabinets, in addition to thousands of kilometers of copper cable, which is being shipped to the United States to be recycled. Make no mistake, this is the most complex project we have ever undertaken. Not enough is being done for people living with disabilities. That's the view of former government Senator Carrie-Anne Eiffel, who says that Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean are not doing enough to include them in the political and economic development of society. She made the comments while addressing the 22nd Sealy's annual conference this afternoon. Many of our parliaments have, within the recent past, been forced to adopt electronic means by which to conduct the country's business. This is an excellent opportunity for more persons with disabilities to actively participate where buildings prohibit the availability of persons with the access rather of persons with disabilities from being part of the chambers. Use of electronic technologies affords us such an opportunity. Therefore, we must not see a return to the regular status quo but provisions of hybrid opportunities should be made. Further, persons with disabilities should be provided with the means by which to access such technologies and other aids as deemed necessary. Further, those laws that prohibit persons with disabilities from holding public office need to be sought and redressed wherever possible. In one Caribbean territory, persons who receive benefits from the government are barred from holding any public office. A Caribbean observatory on sexual reproductive health and rights was launched today in a bid to not only monitor but to act on gender-based violence. The United Nations Population Fund says the initiative is also set to improve coverage, access to, and the uptake of both SR. HR and gender-based violence services for vulnerable populations. Analyst Davina Gale Williams outlined key priorities at the opening. Even though I'm behind, you know, that is one of the 
one of the core principles of the Spotlight Initiative. And of course, that is what we want to, em to embody in this observatory. That's what we wanted to embody in the observatory. And so, next slide, our, 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 our beneficiary population in terms of our vulnerable populations um, would be all inclusive. Um, but, but coming out of the team from my interviews as well, you know, we, there, there was a special focus, you know, narrowing down of the population about social health and rights and gender-based violence. Um, we tend to leave out the men, and this was something that came out in the team from an interview that we, we can't leave out the men in order to advance or to make progress in social productive health and rights, and we will we'll have to ensure that men are included. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional happenings in St. Lucia, a 23-year-old inmate at the Borodialis Correctional Facility is dead after sustaining injuries in an explosion at the prison. Details on the incident are still emerging, but preliminary reports indicate that the prisoner was at work in a tailor room. We get the details in this report from HTS News Force. The latest in a string of recent incidents at the Bodily Correctional Facility happened about 10.30 Wednesday morning. Dead is 23-year-old Johan Henry, who was serving time for attempting to cause death. Henry began his three-year, three-month sentence on the 20th of December 2020. He was just four days shy of his 24th birthday. Reports from the prison indicate that there was an explosion at the BCF's tailor shop. The steam tank, according to prison sources, exploded, sending sharpnel in the direction of Henry. He is said to have suffered extensive head injuries as a result and succumbed on the spot. We responded to a, a call from um, bodily correction facility. We responded and as to the details of what actually transpired, um, I will leave that to the director of, of Bodily to, to make a statement, but um, we didn't transport or we didn't get into action as it relates to the, the, the call that we received. On the international front, former French President Nicolas Sarkozy was today handed a one-year prison sentence by a Paris court after being found guilty of an illegal campaign financing for his failed 2012 re-election bid. More in this report from Reuters TV. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy was found guilty of illegal campaign financing by a Paris court on Thursday for overspending on a failed 2012 re-election bid. But he's unlikely to serve the one-year sentence he was handed. His lawyer said he'd appeal, effectively suspending it. And the judge said he could serve the term at home with an electronic tag. But it was his second guilty verdict this year. And a stunning fall from grace for a man who led France from 2007 to 2012 and still holds sway among Conservatives. His Conservative Party spent nearly double the 22.5 million euros, that's currently $19.2 million, allowed under electoral law, prosecutors said. It held extravagant campaign rallies, then hired a friendly public relations agency to hide the cost. Sarkozy has denied wrongdoing. He told the court in June he hadn't been involved in the logistics of his campaign for a second term or in how money was spent during the election run-up. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.